Hey everyone, welcome back to One Strange Adventure and welcome to the next video. In today's video, we're gonna talk about some more RV tips. There were a couple of things that come to mind as being really intimidating when you buy your first fifth wheel. Uh, some of those things are actually connecting it to the truck, disconnecting it from the truck, uh, having to use a manual sliding hitch and when to use that, uh, in addition to actually using the auto leveling system of the grand design. Now they do break it down pretty easy for you so you can follow the instructions, but at the same time, knowing the responsibility that comes along with all of those tasks uh, was pretty intimidating as a first time fifth wheeler. So in this video, I'm gonna break those things down for you and show you exactly how I do them. So let's get going. So the first thing I want to do is talk a little bit about the hitch that we use. It's a Kurt A16 manual sliding hitch. That's right, we do have a Ram 2500 that has a short bed, uh, so we do need the slider. And so this, this hitch has been pretty good. It's really easy to connect. Uh, sometimes it's a little difficult to disconnect depending on if your camper is on level ground or not. I don't have experience with other uh, fifth wheel hitches, so I don't know if it's the same. For others but if there is a slight slope uh, towards the back of the RV and so that the RV is actually pulling pressure against the back of the truck it is a little difficult to disconnect obviously you want to make sure that you have the proper uh, chalks under your tires before you release it um, but it is sometimes a little bit difficult to disconnect we've had it stuck uh, on us twice now now with the slider hitch you do have to make sure that you, you keep this thing pretty greased up. You want to make it easy to be able to use. Now there's a couple of things when you're taking in consideration if you need a slider hitch or not. One, do I have a short bed truck? Yes, I do. So I want to make sure that I have the slider hitch. Uh, two is when do you think you will actually need it? So this is pretty interesting. The only time I really use the slider hitch is actually when I'm coming home. I have to make a U-turn in my driveway and I have to make it pretty sharp. And so the slider hitch actually gives me the capability to have the truck and the camper at 90 degrees uh, while making a turn, even with the short bed. And the front of the, uh, the RV, the cap, actually clears the cab uh, of the truck. So that does make it pretty convenient. While we are out actually camping, I've only used it a couple of times. And, but it's one of those things, I think it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So. It's up to you, but if you have a short bed truck, um, I would recommend going ahead and getting a sliding hitch. Now there's actually two types of sliding hitch. There's a manual and an automatic. The automatic is actually going to move the hitch towards the rear of the truck as you make your turn. It has gears that are included in it uh, that makes all that possible. The manual sliding hitch, however, you would actually have to stop and get out of the truck and pull the pin on the side uh, pull it out and then slide it back. Now there's a, a little bit of a sequence that you have to do and I'll show you guys exactly what you have to do in order to slide that hitch back. There's a pretty cool feature about this hitch and it's actually this piece right here which actually gives you a color code. Uh, there is yellow that represents couple, green means you are uh, ready to tow, and red means uh, it is uncoupled. So as of right now it is in yellow which means that this hitch is in a position right now where it is ready to receive um, the pin of the RV. Once it the pin slides in, it'll actually turn to green, and that means you're ready to go. All right, so now we know that the truck hitch is ready to receive the fifth wheel. Now we gotta make sure that the fifth wheel is ready to receive the truck. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do in this multi-step process is going to the bay where the ground control auto leveling system is located. We're going to turn it on by pressing the power button, and then we're going to press the left and the right button at the same time. What this is going to do is it's going to retract the rear four jacks of the RV and put it in a position ready for the truck to back up to. Once that's done, you can back the truck up to the camper. I have found that the auto height of the front, uh, recalling from where you released, um, is within like one to three inches. And so it's not perfect. Um, what I like to do is I will back all the way up just before it connects 
and then I will get out and just visually spot check the height of the pin uh, relative to the hitch in the back of the truck. What I like to do is make sure that the pin is actually a little bit lower than the slope of the backside of the hitch, and then that way uh, the hitch actually has to tilt down and under, and it gives me a good connection every single time. So once the rear jacks are retracted and the pin height is correct, it's time to get back in the truck and finish backing the truck up to the RV. All right, so on the Kurt hitch that we have, the way that you know that you have properly coupled the RV and the truck is that you will see the handle on the hitch actually swing back towards the RV itself, letting you know that it has connected properly. Now, once the truck has been connected to the RV, you're gonna get out, make sure you put your pin in, make sure you connect your, your power and your emergency brake. Um, and then we will go back to the ground control uh, auto leveling system. I did say this is a multi-step process. So uh, the first part is making sure all the rear jacks are up, uh, couple the truck, make sure everything is connected properly, and then come back and you're actually going to scroll down until you see the dreaded retract all. Do not press that button unless it is connected to the truck because all six jacks will come up regardless if it's connected or, or not. And what you will end up with is a camper sitting on its nose on the ground and that could be a really bad day. Um, make sure that it is properly connected. Come back to the auto leveling system and then press enter. What that will do is make sure all of the jacks are fully up, including the front. Um, that will actually put all the weight down onto the truck. All right, we have our truck connected to our camper and we are ready to roll. The next thing I wanna show you is actually how to use the manual sliding hitch uh, in case you ever have to. Um, the first thing you're going to have to do is get out of your truck. I found that it's easier to actually stand up on the tire to give you a little bit more leverage. Um, you're actually gonna pull that handle out and then you're gonna push the handle towards the cab of the truck. And what that does is there's a, actually a notch on the underside of that handle that's gonna make it face towards the camper. What that means is that it's going to slide towards the camper uh, when you uh, go to actually slide the hitch. Uh, you're gonna come back into your cab uh, with that handle still out and you're gonna have to hold the uh, trailer brake all the way down so that it engages the brakes on the camper. You want the camper to provide the resistance. You're gonna put it in drive and then I don't give it any gas, I just let off the brake and slowly coast forward and you'll definitely know once it hits the back of the slides. At that point, you're ready to make turns up to 90 degrees with a short bed truck. Okay, so we have made our sharp turn. Um, we have to stop the truck again. That's the downside of having a manual sliding hitch and have to get out and pull the handle. This time, the handle is going to turn uh, towards the RV rather than to towards the cabin. Uh, that way the notch is facing towards the truck. Um, we're going to get back in the truck. We're going to, again, hold that trailer brake, which engages the RV's brakes and provides the resistance. This time, instead of putting it in drive, we're going to put the truck in reverse. We're gonna let off the brake and we're gonna slowly coast back until you feel the little bit of a jolt and the handle should pop back right into place. Okay, so at this point, we have driven to our campsite. We've visually inspected everything uh, before we start backing the RV in. We have successfully backed our RV or pull through, depending on the site. Um, but we are in place and we are ready to disconnect from the truck. The first thing we're going to do is make sure that we have the proper wheel chalks. And so we wanna make sure that the RV is not going to roll anywhere once we disconnect. I use scissor chokes that go in between the two wheels on each side of the RV. Those work pretty good for me. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open the hatch where our ground control auto leveling system is housed and we are going to turn that on and we're going to uh, scroll down until we see the words drop front jacks. Then we are gonna press enter and wait for the jacks to make contact with the ground. At this point, what I'd like to do is actually raise the nose of the camper by pressing the front button on the auto leveling system so that the nose of the camper raises up until the point where you see a tiny gap 
between the pin box and the head of the hitch. Now that the front of the RV is at the right height, we are ready to uh, decouple the hitch from the RV itself. And so at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the pin out of the handle of the hitch. We're going to pull the handle towards us uh, on the side of the truck and then push forward um, towards the cab itself. And this will actually open the jaws um, from the hitch and allow us to be able to pull forward from the RV and disconnect. All right, so we have successfully decoupled the RV from the truck, and now the only thing left to do is to let the ground control auto leveling system do its job. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to that now, and we're gonna press that big button on there that says auto level. It is probably my favorite feature of this RV because I previously had a travel trailer where I had to do it uh, completely manually and that was a bit frustrating when it was 100 degrees outside. So this is by far my favorite feature of this uh, fifth wheel. So you come over to the ground control, you press auto level, and then you just watch it do its thing. All right, everyone, if you hung in this long, I really appreciate you watching this video. I know there was a lot of information in this video, um, but a lot of these things were very intimidating to me as a first time fifth wheeler. And so I wanted to make sure that the things that I've learned along the way that I pass along to you guys. And as I learn more, of course, I will pass that along. If you have any preferences on hitches or how to actually um, do this process, please feel free to leave comments below. Always love to learn uh, different ways to approach um, how to decouple or couple the RV and the truck. Alrighty guys, well that does it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you smash that like button. If you really liked the video, make sure you subscribe. And until the next strange adventure, keep making your own.